What's going on guys? Welcome back to another salvage story where we give you an unfiltered look into the good, bad, and the ugly of the specialty auto salvage world. And at the end, we let you know how much money we made or lost. So far in this series, you've seen us do some American cars, some German cars, but today we are doing one of my favorite Japanese cars of all time, the Honda S2000. Now, based on the auction photos, it was clear that this car had a few modifications, but while we were unloading it from the truck, it looks like it might have a couple additional goodies underneath. So we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get it up on the forklift and see what we're working with. All right, so our two resident S2000 guys saw this thing come off the trailer and have been standing here waiting for me to pull it around. I, uh, I think we're gonna have a bidding war before this car even gets looked over. All right, who wants what? I think. Hood, trunk, intake. You're running up a tab, geez. I got to uh, a ricey, ricey hood carbon fiber. Li leave leave no, that to Fernando. I'll leave that Rice. to the ricey car. For reference, I'm not going to tell you which one is which. You guys have to guess. Who owns which S2000? One of these is Eric's, one of them's Fernando's. So go in the comments, guess who owns which one, and more importantly, tell me which one's a better car. Oh, look, has it cracked? $500 there. You're gonna pay five hundred dollars. I say five hundred dollars less. So this is the kind of stuff I was seeing when we unloaded it from the carrier, and uh, there is definitely some more going on under here. So this is obviously aftermarket. I have not seen this on one of these before. At least that we've got in here. That looks like some kind of whole chassis brace. As I smack my head into the fender liner. What do we have in the rear? Another chassis brace. A uh, ooh, a JIC. Old school JDM there. I like that. Axle spacers. HKS. Wow, that's got to be. Yeah. Okay. And let's be real, guys, there is not a single exhaust that you can put on a Japanese car that sounds better than an HKS. Really? It's just a fact. You, you can't even debate it. It's just how it is. I don't know. I'm kind of digging the taillights. Those things look sweet. I guess they're Buddy Club or similar? Buddy Club. Buddy Club? Yeah, Buddy Clubs. I've had some Buddy Club taillights come through the shop before. More often than not, we get one good one for some reason. Let's see what we got going on under the hood. So we saw the Takeda in the auction photos. We That's knew that was it? there. Takeda. Takeda, Takeda. Let us know how you say that. Maybe we're completely butchering that. It's just another brand that, you know, nobody really knows how to say right, apparently. Teal, Tile, Tien, Tain, Teen. So who knows? Stock cat or stock cat, which is actually always nice because as we know, cats are great scrap money in these. So because of modern scrap prices, cat deletes, test pipes, that kind of stuff are the only mod that I actually don't want to see when I buy a car. This cat is worth five, six, seven times more than a test pipe is. Healthy. All right. This thing sounds good. Not this thing well. sounds really good. So if you guys couldn't already tell, this is an AP2, AP2 console, radio door, cluster, steering wheel, the whole nine yards. So the VIS it doesn't fit perfect, but it's not too bad. The finish looks good. So there's that. Oh, we got a, oh, we have an amplifier stop. in there too. Wow. I didn't, oh, I didn't even see that. It was covered up. A nice slim box Pioneer. It's always a nice little bonus. Uh, what do you say we test this out? We can't have a stereo in here and not test it out. Okay, we're actually not testing it because the battery died and now we need a radio code for it, which we don't have. So give it a little rev. It's warmed up now. Let's see how this exhaust sounds. Rev it like you mean it. All right, that's, uh, that Pretty sounds good. good. Yeah, HCAS is phenomenal in these cars. When I was 16 or 17 years old, I got my first HCAS exhaust for my Integra GSR, and it sounded so, so good. I'm a full-blown HCAS fanboy ever since. Every AP2 interior piece looks better than an AP2. Oh, confirmed, 100%. All right, so though it may look this way, I promise they're not buying everything. There will be some parts left over for you guys. You guys know the drill by now. Everything checks out as far as what we can see with the car intact, with it running. 
But you know that's not the end of it. We still have to get the thing apart. We have to leak down the engine, make sure no metal comes out of the trans, diff, anything. There's a lot that could go wrong. But as for now, all things point to this being a great part out. Couple that with the fact that we actually don't have a ton of money in this car at $8,553. And I think we're set up really nice. There's also the kicker that this might be an OEM CRS 2000 lift. If that turns out to be the case, we're going to have just one more nice big money part on this car. We're gonna get it inside tomorrow, get cranking on it, see how things shake out once we actually start turning some wrenches. First, totally unexpected come up on this car. We're gonna go to Alex because he knows far and away the most about this S2000 stuff. This is an OEM CR steering wheel. You can tell the differences due to the stitching color as well as the stitching design. The stitching design is the double wave stitch and the way that it's put together is definitely OEM. Could you do that stitching on a steering wheel being an upholstery guy? No. Too how, good? How tight that is? And they probably heat seal, so you can actually see gold and then there's black intertwined in it. Yeah. That's actually holding this, the gold together. No, that's, it's, it's so incredibly tight. It's done on the machine. On the You're actually buying something. Yeah. What? Uh, he hasn't yet. Well, I, I gotta get my wallet. Yeah, of course you, get, you do. Can you break hundred? Just waiting on my, my bluff and coworkers to buy some parts. Well, Fernando already bought something. It's, that's true. That guy over there is bad. So for context, Eric's bluffing on the exhaust because it's bent. Like, like that ever hurt anything? It being bent adds character. That adds patina. Cost. Patina. That's yeah. True. That everything is more expensive when you have character added to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. As you guys heard me mention earlier in the video, we weren't sure if this was an OEM CR lip. Fortunately, the house S2000 expert is ready to make a call. Oh, it's real. How real? Very real. I highly doubt any non OEM piece is going to have plastic brackets that have mounting tabs like these that are fixed to the lip. A main center brace that is fixed to the lip. And the good part is we got a Honda stamp right there. Yeah, I think that looks legit. Yep. I think we got a winner here. We do. So uh, what are these running these days? Uh, you can, there's very limited colors available, brand new. They're about 13 to 1400 shipped. You can typically get them used for somewhere between like seven and 850. So I'm gonna cut back in because I feel like this is an important part of the S2000 story. You posted this thing what? 16 minutes ago, and Two, yeah, scroll up. Four, six, there you go. Eight, ten. Craziness. 15. Craziness. And five phone calls. All right, we are down and out. Everything went super smooth. It is getting a bit late here, so Tyler is going to break this stuff down in the morning, and then as per usual, we will move on to the most risky part of any part out, the leak down test. S2000s, we typically compression test them rather than leak them down. It's just easier because it's an inline four. It's really nice and accessible from the top. This car already passed the compression test with flying colors at 230 PSI across the board. However, since I wasn't around to get it on camera, we're gonna go ahead and leak it down as well just to back those numbers up and show you guys our full process here. So I'll see you guys first thing in the morning to leak this thing down and let you know what we found out about the car when we got in touch with the previous owner. All right, guys, we are back in the shop, ready to pick up where we left off with the S2000. This is a uh, lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Some fancy taillights. One's broken though, right? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, as we saw, never going to complain about the aftermarket audio stuff. That's always good money. We have the cluster here, which if you haven't been following the S2000 market, these are seven, eight, nine hundred dollars now, depending on condition and mileage. What else do we have here? The case port coilovers, which funny enough did survive, don't ask me how. The seats that came out of the car are actually in pretty nice shape, much better than most, honestly. As these cars get older and older, the quality of seats that we get in them just goes downhill. 
We also found an aftermarket clutch in it, but if you watched the last episode about the C6Z, you know that used aftermarket clutches just don't pull much money. Anybody who wants to take the time to drop a transmission, drop an engine, whatever they have to do to put a clutch in it, generally wants to put a new one in there so they don't have to do it twice. Of all the wheels that came on the car, only one ended up being good. We did get a couple good tires out of it, so at least we can pick up a little money off those, even if we don't have a bunch of wheels to sell. We did get a couple bumpers here. Uh, this one is actually a nice bumper, but I didn't know that. This is something new. You have to drill into the bumper for the CR, the, yeah, for the CR lip. For the CR lip. Gotcha. So, that's gotcha. actually so. Yeah, so, but, so uh, this is only good for somebody that wants to do a CR lip, basically. Yes. Yeah, we still have this big pile of parts here, which is just a lot of run of the mill stuff, but it all adds up. You guys know how that works by now. One thing I was extremely confused about on this car we found these. Which, if you're an S2000 guy, you may know what these are. These are the OEM hardtop latches. They're super rare and super expensive. At least $500 these days. Whoa. It's just another one of the S2000 parts that has went absolutely astronomical price-wise. So it doesn't take a genius to understand that that car didn't have a hardtop on it when we got it. But it just so happens that the previous owner of this car saw Alex's listing for it and reached out and told us all about the car. And while he did take it off prior to the car going to auction, the car had an authentic Mugen hardtop. To be honest, when you have something that's a well-known part like that and the car shows up at auction with it, the auction price tends to go up just as much as the part's worth, so it's really a wash. In that case, I really don't care that it didn't get included with the sale. That about covers it for all the parts we have from it here. We'll let Fernando do his thing with that, but first, it's about time to go leak down that engine. Very oily. This car desperately needs a valve cover gasket. And we went ahead and ordered a valve cover seal gasket, spark plug seal gaskets, OEM of course, and uh, we'll go ahead and fix that. That way the person who gets this thing is not getting something that's leaking oil. Fairly cheap to do, doesn't take us a lot of time, and it's just a much better look for whoever gets this engine. So in case you guys aren't familiar with leak down versus compression, uh, it is definitely possible for a car to pass compression and fail to leak down. Uh, leak down is much more sensitive to say if there's a, a little bit of issue with like the valve seat or something like that. It, it may show up on a leak down test, but not a compression test. So, All right, check it out. Last but not least, another tight motor. We're on a, we're on a hot streak here on Salvage Story, so I'm not going to complain. I don't want to do anything to jinx it. Eventually, I promise you guys are going to see one and uh, you're not going to see me real happy. But for now, another good one. All right, we got that knocked out. You ready to photo this stuff? Let's go. Let's do it. Engine is sealed, Fernando's slamming away these parts, so business as usual. I'm gonna get started on listing them, then I'll be right back with you to let you know how we did on this car. Before we get into today's breakdown, I wanna take just a second to let you guys in on a new program we're starting here. It's gonna give you guys an opportunity to make a couple bucks while doing something a lot of you guys are already doing. As you guys know, at this point, we buy a ton of cars from Salvage Auction. However, we like buying from individuals even more. Now, a lot of you guys have already picked up on that. When you see a car that you think we should buy, you tag us in it, and I am greatly appreciative for that. However, until now, we haven't really done anything in return for you guys. So starting today, if you see a wrecked car, a blown up car, a project car that somebody's given up on and you think it would be a good fit for us or you want to see it in one of these videos go ahead and tag me in it and if we end up buying it i'll paypal you 100 bucks i'm going to put all of my contact information in the description including all of our instagrams my personal facebook and my email that way no matter what platform you see this car on you can get a hold of us once again i greatly appreciate the people who've already been doing this and this is just our way of saying thank you but enough about that, let's get into the breakdown. So here we are, and as always, first off, what do we pay for the car? Well, in this case, we bid $7,700, which honestly is a steal for this car. I knew it was a steal when we bought it. In fact, I turned to Alice, who also happened to be in the office, and said, hey, 
check this out. I think this is a smoking deal on this car. After doing this for so long, you know when a car is a good deal. You know when a car's eh, okay, and you know when you kind of just bought a car to keep the guys busy. This one off the bat we knew was good, and the numbers you're about to see are surely going to back that up. As you guys know at this point, Copart had to get theirs, and even though we bid $7,700, the total price of the car with Copart fees was $8,553. Regardless of that, we are certainly in this car at the right price. Now, let's go ahead and see how many parts it produced. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. In some of our recent videos, you've seen cars produce very little parts, whether it's because they're significantly wrecked, whether it's because a lot of the stuff isn't that valuable. However, it's not the case with this one. We kept a lot and it had a lot to give. This car had in total 128 parts and that doesn't count what Alex has already sold. Not only did it give us a lot of parts, it gave us a lot of value. And while this number by itself is impressive, it becomes even more impressive when you realize it doesn't include the engine. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some standout items from this car. Now whether it's due to age, desirability, or just how rare some of this stuff is at this point, there are definitely some parts that come out of S2000s that sell for some eye-popping numbers. Off the bat, as simple as it may seem, window motors. $200 a pop. They fail a lot in these cars. When we get a car with a pair of good ones, it's an easy $400. They don't cost anything to ship. They are honestly one of the hidden gems in S2000s. Some other parts, while not wildly expensive like the center console glove box, it used to be that you couldn't give these things away for $100. They're fairly large. They cost a lot to ship. These were a part that I didn't pay any attention to back in the day. However, now they've almost doubled in price and you can actually make a few dollars on them. Another part that's followed that trend, the seatbelts. These used to be $150, if that, they were kind of a tough sell. $300 all day now. As we mentioned earlier, one thing we lucked out on with this car, it used to have a hard top and therefore had OEM hard top brackets. That was a $500 gift that we did not expect. Now stop me if you've heard this before, another item that has doubled in price recently. If you can't tell by this point, a lot of things have doubled in price. Some things have even tripled. Unfortunately, auction prices have followed, so it's not that much different than it used to be. It's all just magnified. Yet again, as these cars become more rare and people wreck them more often and there is less and less of these donor corners out of here, this is another part that has simply doubled in price over the past year or two. The same thing can be said with the steering rack here along with the axles. This used to be the price of two axles, no longer. AP2 door panels have always been desirable and always been expensive because of this tweeter hole here. Some of the late AP ones did come with tweeter holes, however, they were circular and less desirable. AP2 door panels have been pretty steady throughout the years and always been a good part for us. We definitely got lucky with these case boards. They are all straight, they all spin freely, so this is another big win for us. Then you get into some of the freight items here, which are expensive, however, they also cost a lot to ship. Both of these bumpers would be worth more money, but as you saw earlier in the video, they're kind of damaged. Following the price doubling trend, we have the AP2 center console, we have the differential, both of those had followed the same pattern. AP2 transmissions, even with higher mileage like this, are now $1,500. Clean AP2 seats are worth good money, though they always have been. And last but not least, as far as special parts, we have the VIS hood. I seem to remember back in the day, the normal going rate for a carbon hood was roughly six, $700 new. Turns out that times have changed because this hood new is roughly $1,200. Meaning that even though this one has a tiny flaw here, I still believe we can pull $750 from it. So that's gonna wrap it up for parts. Now let's hop over into the expenses. Guys, there is no getting around it. You just heard some pretty impressive numbers. Now add to that the fact that Alex already sold $6,810. That brings our total parts value to $30,030. Now some of you guys are probably saying, Lee, you've been lying to us all along. You can get rich in the salvage industry. Well, while we certainly are gonna do good on this car, cars that bring a lot of value, bring a lot of expense. It's really simple math when you have a car that produces a lot of parts, labor, shipping costs, all that's gonna go up. So let's get right into it. This car came from not too far away in Hampton, Virginia. It only cost $300 to get here, not too bad. Next up, labor cost, and it was a killer. Between the techs having to take off that many parts, Fernando having to photo that many parts, and on the back in the shipping department having to ship that many parts, we called it $12.50, which I believe is a record for a salvage story labor cost. And while this is certainly a record-breaking car, as far as selling fees goes, it is right on par, 10% selling fees are credit card processing fees, PayPal fees, eBay fees, any fees associated with selling our product online or otherwise. In this case, it cost us $3,003. Next up, shipping cost. And again, killer. Not only do we have a lot of parts, we have a lot of big parts. You guys saw the bumpers, doors, top. There are a ton of freight items here. Here's another record. I fully anticipate spending $3,000 in shipping costs on this car. 
Finally, we have dead inventory. Inventory that is tough to sell, we have to discount to sell or simply never sells. S2000s are certainly one of our most dialed in chassis. However, when you keep that many parts, there is simply a lot that's gonna sit around. On this particular car, I'm shooting for 10%. Some of the more recent cars, you've seen me go quite a bit lower. In fact, I think I went as low as 5%. But on this one, I don't think there's any getting around the fact that we're gonna have at least $3,003 in dead inventory. So with all our expenses laid out, you know what time it is. Here's the breakdown. As you can see, that leaves us with a theoretical net margin of $10,921, another record. In fact, the first time we've hit the five digit number on salvage stories. There's simply no getting around it. This car was an absolute stud, a full blown home run. As you guys know by now, this is rarely the case in the salvage industry. So, as usual, I'll take it when I can get it. On this particular car, it was a combination of us being in it for the right price, it having some very expensive hidden gems, all the right stuff being good and just overall being a very high quality car. You guys have certainly seen us bring some junk in here. Fortunately, that wasn't the case this time. As always, I greatly appreciate you guys watching. I'm super excited about some of the stuff we have going on here. Not only car wise, but some things we have going on to interact with you guys better. I can't wait to see who we send $100 to first. So if you see a car you think we're interested in, be sure to get in touch with us. One more time, all my information is in the description. As always, if you liked it, subscribe, share, comment, like, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time. I, more experienced, better forklift drivers here to handle this nice How many, okay, serious question. How many Camaro mirrors have you ruined over your time here? All of them. That's for our subscribers only, and Eric doesn't watch <laughs> our videos, so. I got, I got my credit card ready. Well, uh, cash only, cash only I for you. We have a on, uh, high chargeback risk on you, Jeez. I've heard. Jesus Christ, what are you doing? Oh, it's I'm fucking total it. now. Are you the YouTube guy? You don't see it anyway. I don't, I don't but you know it's there. I'm a racer. <laughs> you just ruined that. I, know, I just saw you peeling that paint. You kind of want the seats? My seats look like crap. This look good. 700? Yeah, 700. How much for mine? I don't want you. You just uh, told me they're terrible. Why would I want them? <laughs> Maybe two interior looks better than anyone. Absolutely. Maybe uh, Fernando could stop revving the engine so we could uh, hear Eric talk. <laughs> you... Cash or card? What? You didn't give me any options. You say just cash to me and you say card to him. How does that work? All right, so you're clear for action. Oh, this is the best part about filming. I thought you were gonna help me. Yeah. So, with all of so, so, yeah, yeah kind of like, got a couple bumpers. Jesus Christ! It's Monday. We have we have the cluster here, which if you haven't been following, why do I sound like a moron? Nice piece. That's we do. A very weird thing to be doing, yeah. but okay. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I mean, nobody can fake that, right? I tell. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to. Oh, I got a fake Honda stamp in this toolbox over here. All right, so as you heard me mention earlier in the video, we weren't sure if this lip was an OEM CR. Hey, shut the f up! <sighs> now I'm just off.